So I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce you to both a species and a family. I will start at the family level. Uh, we've already uh, talked about the Asteraceae. This is another common and important uh, family, uh, the Lamiaceae or the mint family. The mint family is one you are familiar with, uh, spearmint and peppermint and many of the uh, spices and herbs that you use in cooking come from the mint family. Uh, characteristics of the mint family as a whole, it's hard to see here, uh, but uh, they have square stems and they have opposite leaves. Now, if you remember from the cup plant in the aster family, uh, the cup plant also had square stems and opposite leaves. But that was just a characteristic of that species. This set of characteristics, square stems and opposite leaves, is almost universal throughout thousands and thousands of species that make up the mint family. The mint family also has petals that are united into um, a single unit and very often have two lips, uh, a lip at the top and a lip at the bottom. Uh, and interior to those uh, petal uh, lips are usually either two or four stamens and a single pistil. Uh, so these are all characteristics of the mint family, as well as, very commonly, the plants have a minty odor when you crush the leaves uh, or step near them and break any part of the plant. Uh, so those are characteristics of the mint family, the Lamiaceae. This is a particular species within the mint family. Uh, this is called the obedient plant. Uh, why would it be called the obedient plant? We'll talk about that in a second. The obedient plant uh, is a relatively easy plant to um, identify. It has uh, these flowers with tubes. Uh, they're kind of a light pink color. They're clustered together near the tips. Uh, they have um, lance-shaped leaves uh, with very sharp teeth along the margin. Uh, but the characteristic that you'll never forget if you've ever come across one is that they are obedient. And when I say obedient, what I mean is you take any one of these flowers and you move it in the inflorescence and you say stay, and it stays. So you can move a flower out here and it'll stay out there and it obeys uh, what you tell it to do, stay. The obedient plant. Uh, this is Physostegia speciosa, that's P-H-Y-S-O-S-T-E-G-I-A, new word, speciosa, S-P-E-C-I-O-S-A. And this gives me an opportunity to talk a little bit about species concepts uh, in flowering plants. I will talk about it in more detail at other times. Uh, but if we were taking this class together out in the field, uh, I would have each of you buy the field manual of Michigan Flora. Uh, there's a manual specifically for the Chicago region, uh, but there are two reasons to have a class work with the field manual of Michigan Flora. One of which is that the plants of the Chicago region weighs about 75 pounds and the Michigan Flora weighs about 3 pounds. The other is that the plants of the Chicago region cost $125 and the Michigan Flora cost $30. Uh, there's a few plants that we'd see here that aren't in the Michigan flora, but there's a tremendous amount of overlap. The interesting thing is, if you were to key this plant out in the Michigan flora, it would come out as Physostegia virginiana. And in the Chicago flora, it comes out as Physostegia speciosa. And what that means is the authors of the Chicago flora took one species Physostegia virginiana and divided it into three separate species. Uh, and so this comes out as a different species. Plants, species concepts in plants are very different from those in animals because animals have the ability to seek out mates and thus only mate with members or usually only mate with members of the same species. Whereas plants mate by using vectors like wind and insects and birds to carry pollen from 
one plant, from the male part of one plant to the female part of another plant, but that pollen could, could land anywhere. And if it lands uh, on a, um, a pistil of a closely related species, could just very well produce offspring that are intermediate between the two species and the place where you draw boundaries, where humans draw boundaries between these species uh, becomes problematic and somewhat subjective. Thank you for your kind attention.